Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal back with a new podcast. We are on the 63rd, 6th Street of the Mr. Informal podcast. I hope you had a good month of February because, well, this past week, February has passed and we are on March. What have I done with my life? I don't know. I felt like February just came and exit for some reason I felt like there was no February but February was Black History Month it is also the month of love Valentine's Day sadly there was no leap year so we are on the 63rd edition don't forget to add me on Instagram that's Mr. Informal M-I-S-T-E-R-I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L and check out my website at mysteryinformal.com. That's M R I N F O R M A L dot com. So we have four topics for today. Number one, Payless Shoe Store is closing up shop. Number two, and this is happening in Europe, billboard ads are actually scanning your face. I'm not, ha- I'm not quite happy about that. Number four, UK lawmakers taxing fast fashion that's going to be interesting and last but not least I know I'm late on this one but Nike with Zion Williams uh, in Duke playing North Carolina his shoe ripped apart in the first 30 seconds of the game and that was not a good 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 uh, how should I say this? Not a good showing for Nike's QC. And so that is basically the four topics for the Mr. Informal podcast. Let's go ahead and start it right now. So Payless Shoe Store is going to close up all of its shop until the end of uh, March this month. And then it will open. Uh, it will remain open until May, the majority. But it's basically closing down. Everything is closing down. So, for all the lower income families and also poor families, however you want to call or classify these families, even the kids looking for new shoes or looking for reasonably priced shoes or cheap shoes, inexpensive shoes. Well, you're going to have to find some other stores to find your shoes. There are options, but with Payless, obviously with the name Payless, there's $10, $20. If you go to TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross, or even Nordstrom Rack, even the sales area or even the outlet, they could range from $30 to $70. So they're not in the vicinity of a Payless price. But what do I think of this? I think it's it's too bad. It's absolutely too bad. I think that the bad thing about Payless is that the quality was never up there. I think that you could have great quality shoes. I'm just talking about quality in terms of materials here. Design, you could do whatever you want with design, okay? But in regards to quality, I'm not saying that it should have the best type of material but at least make it worthwhile to the point where it doesn't break down within a year I believe that in any price range you can make quality material that could last more than a month and depending on how it's designed how it's stitched how it's glued again it could last up to more than a year and when you're buying something from Payless, you know you're going to buy something that could probably last you three to six months. It could be within a year. could be a year. But it's too bad that the families who shop at Payless will find some other store to buy. Not only that, you could go to Payless to buy flip-flops, sandals. You know, one of those things. One of those disposable type of sh- uh footwear and in a bigger picture I think Payless is not the only one that is affected by this bankruptcy or even uh, closing up shop it's also the malls I mean 
I would not be surprised if Foot Locker, Foot Action, Champ Sports, Chic, or any type of shoe store, especially Journey, is going to close up shop. I never understood about Journey. I think Journey is so... I don't know what it is, but I just don't like going to that store. Whether it be the customer service, whether it's just too much shoes, not enough sales, or just not enough good quality shoes that you see in there. And going back to Payless, the the retail location are not even that good. Plus, their their brand recognition is just so bad that nobody even wants to go there. I'm not. I I've been to Payless. I don't really care about the brand recognition, brand reputation. But their brand recognition is just so bad to the point that no middle schoolers, no high schoolers would even want to go there. But if you are just, look, if you are a family that is in low income or poor or live paycheck to paycheck, then go over there. Nobody should be ashamed. And I believe that Payless should have gone, I um, mean, should have been better at adapting to the market needs, it should have upgraded their materials and qualities, their workmanship. Not only that, should have also created a better retail environment because their customer service is just bad they're the people who they hire are bad i'm not saying all of it but the majority it's almost like they just don't have an idea and not only that their retail space is small i mean what can you buy in pay less that you could get your size in i mean once I bet they only have five quantity per size and then that's it and then they kind of wonder oh how come nobody's buying a shoe well you only have this much I are they I always wonder are they doing a data analysis to where they stock more of this size because this size is is what a lot of people buy or people have uh, the majority of the consumer have this shoe size or feet size I always wonder that because as you know when you go to Payless you see these big sizes it could be 13 14 or even 12 or even size 11 size 11 is actually quite common so it's not bad but again if you're buying sneakers or just some throwaway shoe I'm not sure Payless should be the type of place that you buy your flats your your sneakers but if you're going to a concert and you know buy you want to buy a throwaway shoe then yeah you go to pay less but that goes back to the environmental effects of it if you're gonna buy a shoe and then you're just gonna throw it away after one day of concert use what's the point now you're basically throwing away waste so it goes in circles I'm not really sure why Payless is closing I don't know what's the main reason but for some reasons I think there are multiple reasons as to why they are closing down and for some reason I would not be surprised so I'm looking at this article from The Guardian uh, the title is are you being scanned how facial recognition technology follows you even as you shop so this is in Europe it looks like could be the UK or somewhere whatever it may be uh, it says uh, Westfield smart screen network oh wait 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 no, hold up so the beginning of the article no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is actually in Australia, not in Europe, Australia. So if you shop at Westfield, you've probably been scanned and recorded by a dozen of hidden cameras built into the center digital advertising billboards. The semi camouflage cameras can determine not only your age and gender, but your mood, queuing up to tailored advertisements within seconds, thanks to facial recognition. Westfield Smart Screen Network was developed by the French software firm uh, Vividi 
Back in 2015, their discreet cameras capture blurry image of shoppers and apply statistical analysis to identify audience demographics. Mood is particularly valuable insight for advertisers revealing shoppers' general sentiment towards a brand and how they feel particularly particular stores at certain times of the day. Unlike gender and age, mood is harder to determine, sitting at around 80% accuracy. Wow. There are now more than 1,600 billboards installed into 41 Westfield centers across Australia and New Zealand. Wow. Unbelievable. So, they have the hidden cameras or camouflage cameras cameras and billboards in Australia and there's 1600 of them and they're scanning your face basically analyzing your mood I am not okay with this I believe that this is unless it's given my consent this is basically how when people are recording outside video recording and there's people out there, hey you can't record me are you gonna block my face it's basically that's it but in this case it, since it's hidden no one knows and I want to know if there was a consumer consent there was a actually vote on this because this is absolutely maddening and not only that they're selling your mood or the analysis that they get to the advertisement so who gets the money I want to know who gets the money. Do I get the money? Do Australians and New Zealanders get the money? Well, whatever it may be, I'm pretty sure it's going to trickle to America and all over the world. And hopefully there's protests on it because I'm not quite fond of this. Man, how many more do we need our data to be sold off to advertisement whether it's facial recognition what we serve on our phone or who we talk to what kind of things we look in the social media what kind of things we talk about i mean damn it's like information 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 overload overload not overlord well i for one do not welcome information overlord but look, this is just crazy. I mean, is this what the future is going to look like? They said blurry images, but looking at the article, I mean, it doesn't look blurry to me. I mean, they can say whatever they want, but cameras are getting better, clearer, they're getting faster, they're getting tinier. I don't know about things getting blurry, but. If I was an Australian and I found out about this, certainly I wouldn't be I wouldn't be so happy about it. Because this is something that everyone should vote for. I mean we should have the right to privacy. I'm not entirely sure what the Australian Privacy Act is or are, but certainly it's not something that uh, should be passed right away, it should be voted for. And that's when privacy come into place so in the UK UK lawmakers actually no let me just get specific British lawmakers are taxing fast fashion so there's an article in Reuters.com titled British lawmakers call on government to put an end to throw away fashion when they mean throw away fashion could be fast fashion so a cross-party group of British lawmakers recommended on Tuesday, this past Tuesday, that brands and retailers in the fashion industry should pay a penny per garment, one cent, per garment to fund better clothing to waste collection following an eight-month inquiry into the sector. So check this out, right? The British buy more clothes per person than any other country in Europe. Are you serious? The report published as a result of the inquiry noted while around 300 tons, 300,000 tons 
of textiles waste are sent to landfills or incinerators in the UK every year. Not only that, the fashion industry is a big business in Britain worth 32 billion pounds, that's equals 41 billion dollars in 2017 and employing 890,000 people in retail, manufacturing, brands, and fashion design in the country. Wow! So what do I think of this? I think this is great. A penny per garment? Why not? It's only a penny per garment. I'm pretty sure that these brands are probably making up money sweatshops or un, uh, not safety regulated factories. So they should pay these fast fashion should pay for them whether it be Zara, Target, Walmart, H&M, Forever 21, Urban Outfitters, the list goes on and on. ASOS, Topman, Topshop, whoever, whenever. And this should not even be in the UK. Screw it. Just make it the whole UK or even make it the whole world. That way Yes, it, we can say it's penny pinching, but it can make a difference. You know, building more incinerators, maybe building a plant that can recycle garments. Heck, why not just why not these brands just make their products into 100% cotton? Now, obviously, there's going to be effects of that, so and so. But if it's made of polyester, you know, that's made of fossil fuels or even plastic, same with nylon, and there's even towels out there and other accessories that are made of uh, recycled plastic fibers again it's still plastic so nature can't just degrade it right away it takes a long time to biodegrade man-made goods so the article also continues, aside from the penny charge to fund better waste collection, the committee called on the government to implement tax reforms to reward companies that design products with less environmental impact to favor reuse, repair, and recycle of garments. That's a pretty good plan. That's a pretty good plan. It also recommended lessons to design, make, and mend clothes should be on the school curriculum, while sales tax on repair services should be reduced. Hey, that sounds a re that sounds like a reasonable plan. And obviously, we're living in a throwaway society. I just talked about it in the pay less subject. We buy it, we throw it away within one month, within one use, two uses, whatever it may be. But I believe that this is the kind of plan that should be applied all over the world, not just in the UK, not just in America, all over the world. All right, the last topic for today is uh, Zion Williams' shoe ripped apart in the first 30 seconds of the game. I know I'm late on this one. This happened two weeks ago, but Nike stock fell down. Not only that, it was a must-watch game, college basketball hoops between Duke and North Carolina. As you know, they are rivalry. So we get to see the shoe get ripped apart it was a pg shoe paul george shoe even paul george had to call up nike and say hey what happened here i mean this was not a good i mean showing for nike i mean you can see in the social media the memes the meme however you want to call it i mean so this is what i mean is that the shoe when deconstructing it it was only held by glue so as heat uh, heat and pressure goes up the glue starts to get soft and then once you slide especially in basketball you slide a lot you move a lot with your feet your shoe can easily get ripped apart or even during the game i've seen it i mean i've seen it even in court so and so and nike stock fell down just a little bit but was that the reason i don't know but it could have been it could uh it could have helped and uh, i think 
the quality of your shoe is always in question here. No matter how good looking the shoes is, the quality is. Not only that, it's a signature shoe and the prices could be 120 to 150. That's it's a PG shoe, Paul George shoe. And when kids sees this, obviously they can say, "Oh my goodness, I don't want to wear that cuz it might get me injured. I might get a leg injury from this." And I just paid over $100 for this shoe and it's it's only being held by glue. Well, then there's a problem. Nike said that they were looking into it, and then there's a special case. But you can certainly tell that Nike is going to modify, reconstruct, trying to find solutions. Find uh, they're going to revise their quality control and their manufacturing and design, and especially construction as to how the shoe is made. They could find a better. Uh, sticking glue for one of those crazy glue i guess you can say or some certain type of epoxy whatever it may be just to make sure that this does not happen again especially on a signature shoe and the thing is the runners the runners seems to be better made than a lot of their signature shoe which i don't understand the runners are actually much cheaper now I'm not saying that Nike is, is a victim 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 of this. Adidas go go through it too. Under Armour, I mean, Fila back in the day, even Starters back in the day. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Even New Balance go through these things. But now on the first 30 seconds of the game, I'm pretty sure that he probably worn this shoe a couple of times. But man, for a signature shoe. It's, it is unacceptable. It is not something that Nike should be making, especially for a brand like Nike who has the resource, the money, the finance, the factories, the designers, the technical designers, and the know-how, especially the experience to have these kind of problems. And obviously it, it was amplified because it was a must-watch game between Duke and North Carolina and former president Barack Obama was there so seeing this well it was a bad it was one of those the wrong time at the wrong at the wrong place or you can even say the right place to have this happen hopefully I do have Nike shoes hopefully Nike absolutely take this in consideration and absolutely revise their technical know-how and their construction to make sure that this does not happen again. I mean, imagine, like I said, imagine if you're a kid and you see this, and especially parents, you see this and you ask yourself, what kind of shoes is that? You know what? I'm not buying that for my kid. No way. And Nike will see themselves losing dollars. And that is when be things become a chain reaction and so that basically concludes this podcast of the mr informal 63rd edition podcast that's 63 i hope you learned something today and if you have any further comments let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to check out my website that mr informal.com that's m r m r I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L dot com and follow me on Instagram M-I-S-T-E-R and I-N-F-O-R-M-A-L dot com Whew, I thought I lost my train of thought over there and I will see you in the next Mr. Informal podcast bye bye